Longbill curlews are shorebirds. They're an animal that we associate with coastal areas. You get this huge long bill that they use to probe for insects, beetles, a variety of invertebrate prey. Despite the fact that we think of them as being associated with coastal areas, they come up here to the Great Plains to breed during the summertime. My name is Andy Boyce. I'm a research ecologist at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. We're out here in the American Prairie Reserve putting GPS tags on long billed curlews. By and large, our populations are relatively stable. Typically, you hear about research where people are going out and researching species that are imperiled. By going out and studying an organism that, despite climatic extremes, despite a lot of things, these birds have managed to do fairly well in a rapidly changing landscape. And if we can find out a little bit about how exactly they're doing that, we might be able to apply those lessons to species that are much more imperiled. We're out here with Stephanie Coates from Intermountain Bird Observatory. She's been studying long-billed curlews for several years. And she's been generous in sharing that expertise with us and helping us to do capturing and tagging out here in Montana. Putting a transmitter on a curlew is really involved. The male incubates at night and the female incubates during the day. And after sunrise and just before sunset, they'll do an incubation switch. So we'll get out here at sunrise, watch for females that are gonna be switching onto the nest and just hone in on them and try and see them get onto a nest. Found a nest, a long-billed curlew nest out here. We checked on it this morning, we watched the female come on and sit down on the nest about, about 7.30. And we're gonna go drop a mist net over the top of her and then fit solar-powered GPS backpack that's gonna stay with her and tell us about how she moves all around this landscape during the breeding season and where she spends the winter, where she stops over during migration. Yeah, at a risk of counting our long-billed curlews before they're in the net, we'll go catch her first and then <laughs> see how things go from there. When we're trapping curlews, we are carrying an 18 meter long mist net out to the nest. The bird sits really tight on the nest. They just assume that the predator can't see them if they hold really still. And it works to our advantage if they stay on the nest um, and we can lower the net down and trap them. Challenge here is navigating about 300 meters through a more or less completely featureless field and dropping this thing within about three meters of a totally invisible bird nest. So it should be a blast. We put these custom hoods over the curlew's bill and had to keep them calm. When they're relaxed, they're less likely to struggle, which keeps them safe. This is the goal, long billed curlew in the hand. In addition to putting the GPS backpacks on, we're taking some very basic morphological measurements, things like bill length, wing length, tarsus length, to give us an idea of general body size of these birds. These devices look pretty big, but they're actually incredibly lightweight, which is what's important. So the actual transmitter here weighs only 13 grams. I'm pretty stringent about making sure that this is a really, really small percentage of their total body mass so the birds don't feel any negative effects from it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Nice. We hope these tags will be on for the entire lifetime of the bird. They're solar powered, so they're just recharging their own batteries from the sun constantly. We get GPS fixes every 20 minutes, so that's really, really high resolution data. We can see whether these birds are using short grass areas, prairie dog towns, wetlands, agricultural areas, and that's the sort of start of the process that allows us to figure out what sort of resources these birds are actually using out here. To be able to track them throughout the entire annual cycle is really an amazing opportunity. This one bird has been particularly exciting. She nested here on a prairie dog colony and spends a lot of her time foraging here in the immediate area around the nest. This is the area around the nest right here. This bird's taken one really long flight to another big active prairie dog town to the south of her territory and then returned home within a few hours. This is a 35 kilometer trip, so this is a real expenditure of energy. As a researcher, this is the sort of thing that makes me wonder what's unique about that spot that she traveled to? What makes it worth that journey? Is she just warming up for migration, or is she foraging there for something that she can't find anywhere else? We'll be able to see in great detail what our birds here in Montana are doing, but working with the folks at Intermountain Bird Observatory allows us to put that in the context of the entire global population of longbow curlews.